Welcome! In this lecture we're going to take a look at one-dimensional arrays in preparation for some work we'll do later on arrays of objects. If you think about storing data in a program, up until now what we've been doing is we've been storing it in variables. So I might have a variable labelled x. And into that variable x I might want to put the number 7. So if x is to hold an integer I would declare it by writing int x and my semicolon. Now into that, va that variable I want to put the value 7 so I can say x equals 7. That's straightforward enough. What arrays do is they allow us to store a collection of data so long as that data is all of the same data type. So if we think for example a student has a series of exam results and we want to store all of those exam results together in one place so that we know that they all belong to the one student but we want to keep them independent that we can choose any one exam result later that we want. What we can do in that instance is we can use an array. So in this instance we'll do an array with four spaces in it to store four exam results and this array would be called results. Again similarly to very regular variables we can name our arrays whatever we want. Okay now in order to declare this and it let's assume it's going to hold integers again we would say int results and then to denote that it's an array the only difference is that we put some square brackets at the end and then our semicolon so here we have our array called results which will store integers now supposing I then want to put uh, 99 as the result of one of the assessments into the array I need to be able to choose which space in the array that is. All arrays are indexed from zero up as far as they need to go. So these, each space in this array has a number assigned to it. The number of the first space is always zero. So that's really important to remember. And the number of the next index then is one, two, three, and it continues on as far as needs be. Okay, the way that I get those indexes and then I make sure I have enough spaces in my array is by creating my array. So if I say results equals new int and again with my square brackets and in this instance I want four spaces in my array then I put four in my square brackets. Okay, this creates a new array of integers called results with four spaces in it. Then what I can do is I can assign my 99 to space 2 by saying results 2 equals 99. Now we can't just have arrays of integers, we can have arrays of strings, characters, doubles, floats, whatever data type you want, okay? And in fact in later videos we'll look at arrays of objects, okay? So in this instance the example was int if we were declaring an array of doubles we would simply say double and let's say for instance the marks of a particular student and we would have our square brackets marks is a new array of doubles with whatever number of spaces we wanted to have okay the important thing to note here is that our last index in an array with four spaces is three but our size is four okay so the size is four but the last index is three and that's something just to note at this point in time if for instance i wanted to put nine other numbers in here uh three six and seventy five Okay. Another way to declare and create this array called results and to put all of those values in it is to say int results square brackets equals curly bracket and then list the values that I want to put in. Now be mindful this is a little limiting in that you must know all of the values before you write the code. 
we don't always know all of the values that we want to put into an array. But this will effectively do the same thing as what we've done up at the top, okay? So it will declare an array called results, which will hold integers, but then it goes a step further and it adds all of those integers into the array of integers. Okay, so that's another one to be mindful of if we want to declare, create, and assign values all at one time. All right. Now what we're going to take a look at is some coded examples. So we'll just create a new class and I'm going to do this in TextPad. So let me just increase the font size here. This is just a basic example. So we'll work in TextPad public class and we'll call this one loop public static void main string args. Okay. And then in here, we want to um, declare an array, for example. Okay. So supposing we have an array called results and I want to store the results of all of my students for one exam. Okay. We denote an array with the square brackets. Results is a new array of integers with 100 spaces in it. Now, to start off with, I want all of my students to have a mark of zero or a result of zero. So what I need to do is I need to put a zero into every space in my array. Now, looking back at our notes from earlier, the way that we add a value into the array is the name of the array, the index, and then the value itself. So essentially what I'm looking at doing here is results 0 equals 0, results 1 equals 0, results 2 equals 0, 3 equals 0, etc., etc., for 100 times. I'm not going to waste my time doing that, okay? And so the better way to do it is to use a loop, all right? For int i equals zero, our counter in this loop is going to start at zero because our first index in the array is zero and we want to loop through each index of the array. So in essence, the counter in this case represents the index of each space in the array. i is less than 100 because I know there's 100 spaces in my array. i equals i plus one. Okay, and then in here, I want to assign a value to that space in the array. So results i equals zero. So what this is going to do is it's going to take results zero and assign a zero. Then next time around the loop, results one equals zero. Then results two equals zero, results three equals zero, and so on until my counter reaches 99. And then it will have happened 100 times, so it will stop. So let's just, we could run this right now, but we won't see anything. So the best thing to do then is perhaps another loop to print out all of those values. So for int i equals zero, i less than 100, i equals i plus one. So we want to loop through each index in the, in the array and we want to system.out.print ln results i and that's going to print whatever the contents of the results array is at the index i okay um let's compile this and we have no errors and so if we run it tools external tools and run you'll see there i got my 100 zeros so each element in the array has been correctly initialized to zero Okay, now in this instance, we knew we had 100 spaces in the array. You won't always know how big your array is or how many elements you have in the array, okay? Depending on what program you're doing. So an alternative would be to specify the name of the array and to use the dot length method. And that will give us the length of the array. So you'll see now if I change both of these to be results dot length instead of specifying the 100 and I compile again, and we run again. 
you'll see it does exactly the same thing. So we still get our 100 zeros. Okay, so you'll see loops are very useful for use when we're looking at arrays. We use them to do what they call traverse the array. Okay, so to visit each space in an array individually and to do something, be that assign a value or print a value out or take the value out and add it to something or to get the average of everything in an array. There's any number of things that we can do. Okay, but that's arrays in a nutshell. Just to recap, we declare an array, int results, square brackets. To create it, result equals new int, and then the index, the size, goes inside the square brackets. Okay, to assign a value, results, the index you want the value to go into, equals whatever the value is. Note, if we're assigning strings to an array of strings, we should use quotation marks around the value. In this case, it's just 99. If 99 was a string, we would have quotation marks around it. We can have variables or arrays of all different data types, not just integers. Integers, just the example we used here. And loops are very useful for traversing arrays in order to access all of the, res all of the contents of each space. So this has been your recap on arrays. And um, next thing we're going to take a look at is two-dimensional arrays. Thank you.